Okay, so let me explain first the box model. So a box model represents the structure of a box in CSS. So every element is a rectangular box that contains the following parts. So we have a content, such as the innermost part um, where the text and images appear. I'm going to open my code editor. So I have here the um, HTML with an internal CSS. So in this case, the content will be the P tag and the UL list. I added a background color page so you can um, see the difference between the content and the rest. We also have the padding, which is the space between the content and the border. The padding increases the size of the box. So all what is around the content is the padding, all right? So we have here a padding of 20 pixels. If I remove this padding, you will see that the box will get a smaller. So you see some spaces, they are by default um, added. So there's some padding between them, but on the sides, there's no padding, right? So if we want to add a padding between the border of the box and the content, then we add padding the padding property inside, in this case, the box, right? So when we add uh, 20 pixels as a value, we are adding 20 pixels. And let me just shrink it here. We are adding the padding for all sides of the box. If we want only for one side, on this case, only for the top, Let's say only for the top, then we have here padding top, or if we want the left, padding left, bottom, right, and so on. So if I want to add different um, paddings for all sides, then I start with the top after the right, bottom, and left, just like the clock hands. So in this case, I add maybe 10 on the top, 25 on the right, 5 bottom, and let's say 3 on the left. So you can see we have here 10, 25, 5, and 3. All right, and the same works for the margin as well. You can do exactly the same. If we want to add a padding on top and bottom the same, and the right and left, left the same, then we only add two, right? The first for the top and bottom, the second for right and left. Let me adjust it so you can see a difference. And then it will apply um, a different for both parts. All right, so next we have the border, which is this one. We added a border of two pixels, solid and black. We always start with the width of the border, the style, and after the color, all right? That is the order that we have to apply, that we need to apply a border to the box. So a border will always go inside the box. And at the end, we have also margin, such as the outermost space that separates the element, on this case, the box, from other elements. So we have applied here a margin of 30 pixels for the top and bottom, and on right and left, 10 pixels, all right? So we have margin outside the element, padding inside the element, border that is between the margin and the padding, and the content where we add all the text and images. Okay, so now let's explain box sizing, all right? So we have here, let me shrink this. We have here a box Right, I create with a margin of 20, top and bottom, and on the size 0, and a padding inside of 10 pixels. I have a border and a background color of um, white, which I can just remove from here. It won't make a difference. And I created two boxes. One I call it content, content box and border box, all right? For the content box and border box, you can see that we have the same properties, right? You have margin bottom, background color, and so on. All of them have 
both have the same properties and values. However, the difference is the box sizing. So for the first one, we have content box, and for the second one, border box. All right, so by default, on CSS, if you don't add this property and value, by default is going to be um, the box sizing content box. And let's explain what is content box. That means the width and the height apply to the content only, right? On this case, 200 pixels and the height is the default height, you know, till the um, text finishes, which is here. And the padding and border are added to this width and height, increasing the total size of the element. So the box that uh, we made here, by default, was a content box um, as well, right? Because you can see that it increases increased the size after we added um, the border and the padding, right? And the second one is the border box. So for this one, the width and height included include content, padding, and border. So she's the opposite, right? That ensures that the total size is what you expect, regardless of the padding or border size. So that is the difference between content box and border box. All right, now let's check the display properties. We created again a box with a margin of padding, the same as the prior box. And we have here, we created four divs. And they have different type of values for the property display, right? So for the first one, we added display block. So block element takes up the full width available and it starts on a new line. Examples include div and p. So you can see that it takes the entire width available and it goes outside of our box, right? Now we have the inline value. So for display inline, an inline element takes up only as much width as necessary and does not start a new line. So examples include a span and a. Now we have the inline block that is similar to inline elements, but can have width and height set. In this case, we add a width of 150. And it does not start a new line. And at the end, we have display none that it basically removes the element, all right? So you cannot see it because we choose display none. 